Hello, I'm Jen Shark. I'm second oboe and English horn in the Macau Orchestra. This is my dog, T, and we're out for one of her daily walks. We're heading home now so I can show you how I make reeds for my oboe. It can take a couple of days for just one reed, but I've got it down to less than five minutes just for you. Here we begin. The very start of reeds. Just some bamboo cane here. And what you're looking for is straight pieces. Sometimes you can just roll them. And the way they roll, you can tell if they're straight. Also, you're looking just at the general health of the cane. This is my cane splitter. I just really like how compact this is. It's really easy to use. And now let's split the cane. Get out some aggression and we're still trying to look for the straightest part of the cane. Try to see if there's any light under it, which will give you some idea if it's straight or not. And then now what we're doing is we're going to cut the, the cane to the desired length. And this is a guillotine. Next step, this is called a pre-gouger. There's a blade here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the piece of cane with this to push it. And what it's going to do is start the process of gouging so that the gouger isn't working so much. Otherwise, you have to replace the blade quite often. And now we can move to the gouge. A lot of the sound you get from oboe reeds comes from the gouge. So I usually do like a very generous gouge, let's say like 90. Slowly shaving off pieces of cane. I actually do this process a couple times. Now we have to get a little bit more precise here. 70, so we're doing well. <laughs> and then now I'm just going to go to kind of the final gouge. I prefer kind of around 59, 60. And then we go again. <laughs> Great, and those are our final pieces for gouging. So at this point, I would be soaking these for a while. So this next process, we are gonna bend it. The reason we soak it is because we want it to be able to fold without <laughs> cracking. See, pretty good. This is called a shaper tip. Basically, you consider it like your mouthpiece. I have just put the cane in the shaper tip. Take a razor blade. These are staples, which we will attach the cane to. And this is called a mandrel. We put the staple on the mandrel. It's gonna help us hold on to the reed while we tie it. Now we want to open up the reed. So all I'm doing is just scraping down the very tip to a thinner point. Now let's clip it. And finally, we have an opening. Now we can put a plaque in between the reed blades, like so. The very, very tip needs to be the thinnest part of the entire reed. And it has to do with directing the vibrations and the sounds. This is called a profiler. So you just place the reed and you clamp it in. So all it's doing is just basically doing what I just showed you with a knife. So you can see a lot of cane is coming off. It's saving me a ton of time. And then we do the other side. And I'm using with my left hand to kind of turn it so it follows the guide. Great, let's take it off. At this stage, I like to take out my oboe to see how it feels. I would actually let this read rest. I think for a day or two. Just let it settle into its shape. And then when I pull it out next time, it's going to have a different feeling because it's kind of hardened up into this mm, new shape. No matter what I do to this read here um, at my desk, it will feel and play differently when I go on stage. So you always have to keep that in mind. So you will always see a, a oval player with a knife on stage, always. <laughs> And that's how I make reads. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you're a read maker yourself, I'd love to hear how you make reads. Thanks for watching.